Good morning. We'll go ahead and begin. And I know some people are still out in the hall, and they, they can kind of fill in as they get here. Uh, my name is Chris Yoder, and I've been the editor of the Yoder Newsletter since 1983, and I'd like to welcome you all to this first Yoder reunion that the U newsletter itself is actually sponsored. And as I've said before, this is the 300th anniversary of the first Anabaptist Yoders coming into the country, and it's a couple of days ago was the 275th anniversary of the Amish Yoders arriving in the country. A couple of people asked, where, what were the 30, the 20 some states that people had come from or registered to be in this reunion? And here they are. Alabama didn't make it because of the hurricane, but I think representatives from each of the other states here are present. Just want to remind people and, and thank Steve Yoder in Phoenix, Arizona and his company uh, that there are these drop cloths in the hallway. Uh, if you'd like to get your family picture in front of them and uh, submit them to the Yoder Newsletter Facebook, we'd be glad to see all of, all of the faces of those who uh, choose to take pictures with them uh, on our Facebook page. I'm going to Brief, well, not too briefly. It will take a while. But I, it's, the, the Odor Newsletter, I'll give you, tell you about the Odor Newsletter. I'll go into the origins of the name. Uh, Andreas has already told a little about that. I will talk about the Yoders in Switzerland and Europe, about the different branches of the American Yoders, about our populations, uh, and about some of the Yoder events and activities. Here you can see our first newsletter issue in 1983 and our most recent one, uh, which will be published the 1st of October. Uh, how many of you in the audience are subscribers to the Yoder newsletter? Anybody? Great. Thank you for your support. Years ago, as a teenager visiting my grandparents' home on uh, East Jackson Boulevard in Elkhart, I found a book in their library called Descendants of Jacob Hochstetler, and it had been my grandfather's father's copy published in 1912. And I found our family in it, and I found a story about Indians and an attack and uh, a captivity and being held by th three years and then escaping and eating a dead possum and getting back home uh, to civilization. And uh, that fascinated me and, and sparked my interest in family history. Years later, uh, my wife and I lived for a while in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I was able to do some research in the state capitol there and also to visit Somerset County. Uh, many years after that, uh, my family and I were living in Battle Creek, Michigan, and a book came out uh, that purported to be a Yoder book. Uh, basically, it had a few words up front and then a bunch of addresses and names, mailing addresses out of phone directories. And I wondered who these folks were, where they came from, and how we might be connected. So I wrote a lady named Rachel Kreider, by then a recognized Yoder scholar. She and her husband were in the process of moving to the Greencroft Retirement Community in Goshen, Indiana, and she had been contacted by a retired school principal named Ben Yoder, who had similar interests to my own, and it was not long before we were seated, uh, the three of us together at her kitchen table, and we put together with glue and scissors the first issue of the Yoder Newsletter, and that was the beginning. And I'd like to introduce some of our staff over the years. First, my co-founder, Ben Yoder. He loved the human interest, fun stories about Yoder, while I've always focused on facts and solving mysteries and things like that. For the first 10 years of the newsletter, we would meet at his kitchen table with scissors and glue and put together each issue over a space of a Saturday's effort. It was a tremendous loss of a partner and a friend when he died just short of our 20th issue at the age of 80 while my family and I were living in Saudi Arabia. Rachel Kreider, our partner from the first, began collecting Amish Yoder data after the death of her uncle John Weaver in the mid-1950s. And he had built on information collected by our common uh, family member, Reuben Yoder of LaGrange County, Indiana. Can, and uh, 
1968 and 1971, she wrote articles about the St. Yoder Chapel that you heard about from Andreas for Mennonite Life. And also she wrote some books on Ohio Mennonite cemeteries. But probably most famous of all, in 1986, she and Dr. Hugh Gingrich were to publish what is still the authoritative book on Amish family history called the Amish and Amish Mennonite Genealogies. She was our chief cheerleader of the newsletter from the very beginning, and when she died in 2016 at the age of 106 years and six months, she was still proofing the draft of each newsletter to catch my typographical or grammatic errors. Not long before his death, Ben had wisely recruited John W. Yoder of Middlebury to help us maintain the subscriber database and generate mailing labels for each issue. And when Ben died, John quickly stepped in to keep things going and continued as our circulation manager for over 25 years until his death this last May, following a two and a half year battle with cancer. Esther Yoder, who I first met at a 1995 Yoder reunion in North Carolina, had with her husband been active in building the House of Yoder at Grantsville, Maryland. Soon after our meeting, they also moved to Goshen and she took over the role of managing our mail in 1997 until she retired 18 years later after recruiting Ken Yoder of Goshen, who you probably met at the registration table and will be our banquet uh, MC tonight uh, as her replacement. Esther passed away in 2016. In the 1990s, technology changed and the newsletter could be composed in Microsoft Word and emailed to the printer, which is a Goshen News. We started putting our accumulated files of Yoder data online, uploading records to a server in Santa Barbara, California from Michigan, and we decided we needed an actual web page, so Donald Kaufman of Edmonton, Alberta answered the call and served as a webmaster for almost 20 years. He retired in 2016, and we are looking for a volunteer to replace him. Uh, Ken Yoder is also looking for some volunteers to work with him here in the Goshen area, and please contact him on that if you're interested in doing that. Today, Ken Yoder serves as both the circulation and mail manager, and were it not for his energy and enthusiasm, uh, we would not be holding this reunion today. I'd also like to thank Richard Yoder, Cheryl Parsons, and Titus King for being part of our envelope stuffing cadre, and they've all worked here at the registration table. And a particular thanks to Al Yoder Shipsawani Historical Society, who played an essential role in planning this reunion. I should mention um, that Ken will also be singing tonight as a part of the Yellow Creek Men's Quartet, so he's multi-talented. Where did the name come from? And Andreas talked about this with you, and it came from the name St. Theodore, generally abbreviated over the years as Joder. Uh, and St. Theodore, as, as Andreas said, came over the Alps, bringing Christianity from Italy. Uh, in the year 1981, Luxembourg issued a stamp that you see here to commemorate the 1,600th anniversary of his appointment as a bishop. The Swiss Reformed Church still celebrates August 16th as St. Yoder's Day, so naturally we Americans have to do that too. St. Yoder's Day greeting cards can be downloaded and printed or emailed from the Yoder newsletter website, and Angela Yoder, who also designed our t-shirt, is the artist who contributed those cards years ago. As uh, Joe Springer mentioned yesterday, the stories of Christian martyrs are an important part of Anabaptist religious history. And it's interesting that long before the Reformation, our family took its name from someone closely linked to martyrs. The Theban martyrs were a Roman legion of 6,666 Coptic Christians from Egypt. They were part of an army marched into France in the year 286 AD to help put down a rebellion. They, much like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego eight centuries before, were ordered to sacrifice to pagan gods in celebration. They refused, 
And the story goes that they were decimated, with every tenth man being killed. The order, the refusal, and the punishment was repeated a second time. And realizing that this Christian legion would not comply, the remainder were reportedly all killed. A hundred years later, St. Theodorus located their graves and built a basilica at Sion in their honor. The meaning of the name comes from the Greek, Theodorus. It's composed of two elements, one theos, meaning God, and doron, meaning gift. So together, God's gift. My wife, Carol, and I have been married 44 years, and I know that many days she's considered me more of a booby prize than a gift. (laughs) But I would hope that each of you Yoders is a gift for your family and your community. We can thank two German researchers, Carl Yoder, who was mentioned in the last briefing, and also Otmar Yoder, who worked with him, pictured here, for gathering and sharing a variety of information about the Yoder family in Switzerland and in Germany. And Hans Jakob uh, worked with both of these gentlemen. The St. Yoder Chapel, and Andreas showed that one too, Carl, in the, Carl Yoder in the 1970s was involved in helping to restore and refurbish uh, a St. Yoder Chapel. Uh, it's located up a switchback far above the highway south of Lucerne. It is far from where our family actually lived, but it is dedicated. It was dedicated to St. Yoder about 1482. Part of the decorations inside are a series of nine small paintings, each which relate to one of the various legends about St. Yoder. And I'll tell you one one of those stories. The Pope had presented him with a bell to take back with him over the Italian Alps to his diocesan center at Sion. But he had no way to get the huge bell up into the mountains, so he thought of his power to make the devil do his bidding. Summoning the devil, St. Yoder proposed that if he would take uh, the bell to Sion for him, he could have a human soul. So St. Yoder jumped into the belly of the bell, and the devil, in eager, eager anticipation of his prize, swiftly bore him through the air. But the might of St. Yoder was greater than the cunning of the devil, and at the command of the bishop, a rooster crowed before dawn came, and the devil lost his bit. Nope. Yoder's in Switzerland, again, the same chart Andreas showed. Uh, very early in Steffesburg, and slightly later in Murich. Here's the lineage, it's similar to what you saw uh, from Andreas, and I, I label it apocryphal uh, in that very often these pieces are built from assumptions made out of church records that you'll see a baby born of a certain name and 30 years later he's the father of a child or that same name is the father of the child. Uh, the DAR wouldn't necessarily accept all of those connections but it's very likely that a majority of people in this list are the ancestors of the people in this room. Particularly uh, of interest uh, to American Yoders is the family of Casper Yoder who married Margaret Henning in 1596. And pictured here is their marriage record from the church archives. Two children of Casper have been a focus as a possible origin point for American Yoders for many years. Yost Yoder, born in 1607, and his brother Nicholas in 1609, both married cousins with the same name, Anna Troxel, in a dual ceremony on October 14, 1642. And the recent, the recent findings we have have uh, made con- seem to confirm that these were proper choices for our American family. Children from both of these families left Steffesburg in the 1690s. And here's a display of the different family members. Uh, 
In the Nicholas family, which is pictured below, uh, that's primarily the source of the non-Anabaptist Yoders, although two of the daughters did marry uh, Anabaptists. The Yost Yoder family is very extensively uh, uh, connected to the, the Anabaptist group of Yoders. After they left Switzerland, they went into the German Palatinate, or Pfalz, and uh, there are Yoders in the town of Epstein that took the spelling J-O-T-T-E-R, and there are Alsatian Yoders as well. What we knew uh, at the start of the newsletter was uh, we had good information on our first Yoders, which were the only Yoders that settled in the Ole Valley of Berks County, but question marks on everyone else. And over the years, uh, we've learned more, and we'll tell you about that. <laughs> Rather than going straight uh, in a chronological order, I'm going to group them by, by, uh, in two methods. Uh, there are distinctive DNA patterns that we'll talk about in the subsequent briefing that distinguish the Amish line Yoders from the other Yoder settlers. If you look at the bottom, you see an, uh, an arrow pointing to a column. One, is a f one value is a 15 and one value is a 16, and these are part of the Y chromosome profile for people that have been tested under the DNA project. The Amish are very distinctive. The Amish Yoder descendants have a uh, marker value of 16 at the third measurement there as opposed to 15. So starting with the Nicholas Yoder descendants, again, all of them have the 15 value, which is the historic value of Steffensburg. We've got uh, a series of families. And as I, as I read off the names, if the audience members who are members of that family could just raise their hand to identify themselves. Members of the Ole Valley Yoders, are, do we have some in the audience? Good, good. Hans of Great Swamp, which is the Mennonite line. What? The North Carolina Yoders of, of uh, Conrad Yoder's line. And I know we had several that came, come from North Carolina. How about Melchior Yoder, who was a later Reformed Church person? And I don't believe we have any Yoders of Epstein, but let's go into the listing here. The Ole Valley Yoders um, the first, were the first, and it was... Hans Yoder and his brother Yost, they had been born in Steffensburg in 1672 and 1679, and they were the sons of Adam Yoder and Barbara Oxenbein, who moved to the German Palatinate. Adam was a son of Nicholas Yoder uh, that we talked about. In 1709, a Reformed Church record of Schwetzigen, Germany, which you can see down there in the corner, it reports that Hans and his family have left for the island of Pennsylvania. <laughs> In May of 1709, uh, he's found among the refugees in London. Initially, he bought land in Chester County, Pennsylvania, but then he purchased his homestead in the Ole Valley of Berks County in 1714 near today's uh, town of Pleasantville. These are the earliest signatures that we have of any Yoders, and they are the signatures of John and the ex, or Hans, and the ex of his brother Yost on a petition uh, to make Holy Township a separate township within Berks County. Interestingly enough, among the signatures, uh, one right next to theirs is for a fellow named George Boone, who was the grandfather of frontiersman Daniel Boone. Uh, less is known about Yost than Hans, but they had a joint adjacent pieces of property. It said he was a great hunter and uh, trapper. Uh, at the intersection of their properties, they built the cemetery, which uh, still exists today and is maintained by the uh, Ole Valley, uh, Ole Yoder Historical Association. They hold an annual reunion and have sponsored several national Yoders reunions, inviting us all to come. 
Both brothers died in 1741. Within several generations, their descendants moved further inland into Northumberland, Schuylkill, and other counties. At the bottom of this slide, you can see a gravestone for a Daniel, the son of Hans, who died in 1748. And that's the oldest Yoder gravestone in America still standing. Daniel was the son of Hans's second wife and died without leaving any children. Daniel's death set up a complicated inheritance situation which led to one of Hans's other sons named Jacob going back to Mosbach, Germany in 1771 to pay a son of Hans's brother Jacob to release his share of interest in the Burke County property. The settlement record in Germany in German uh, appears here, and this is on file at the Berks County Courthouse in Pennsylvania. Here's what the family looked like. Hans, a brother Nicholas, who remained in Germany, his sister Barbara, Joost. Hans and Joost were the ones that came to America. Uh, Casper, by some reports, went to Romania, but I've never seen anything to prove that. 300 years later, the homestead of Hans is still in the Yoder family. And in 2014, uh, th there was a special reunion held there celebrating that and giving extensive tours of the buildings and the, the outbuildings of that homestead. The attic of the three-story shop east of the main house was used for storage and also served as a quarters for itinerants. And one of those was a fellow named Johnny Appleseed. He came for the apple seeds. There was a fine orchard on the farm as well as a cider press. Writing in 1932, Margaret Mauger Hayes reported, my grandmother, who was a child at the time, often told me about him. She said he was queer, but very kind to the children he, when she was a child. She would tell them long and interesting stories. So I, I guess from the stories about Johnny, it seemed like he was a little unusual and had kind of fixated on one subject. Uh, but uh, he seemed to be a kind person, and the children loved him. We can thank a number of researchers of this line, including Peter Bertelick, uh, Dr. Don Yoder of the University of Pennsylvania, Dick Yoder, Walter and May uh, Moore, and others. As you will hear, Don Yoder can be thanked many more times as we go through our, our presentation because he discovered through his German contacts uh, many of the connections that uh, have answered the questions on our earlier chart. One noteworthy descendant of Hans is his great-grandson, Jacob Yoder. Jacob was born not far from the homestead in 1758. He left home when he was 13, and he entered the Army when he was 18, serving two years during the American Revolution at seven encampments, including Brandywine and Valley Forge. After the war... He took pack horses from Philadelphia to Fort Redstone near Pittsburgh. He became the first man to take a flatboat down the Ohio River all the way to New Orleans, then going on to Cuba on his way back to Philadelphia. He then returned west, and he traded for several years among the Indians in Indiana and Illinois before settling in Kentucky, where he married and built a mansion on his plantation in Spencer County near Taylorsville. This is Jacob Yoder's property. It's his home, uh, as it was when he constructed it in the early, uh, eight, around 1805. The property is still in family hands, although the Yoder name is no longer there because the family uh, ran to girls. Uh, he was the only Yoder that we know who owned slaves, having a number of them, some reportedly coming from the family of Daniel, bro Daniel Boone's brother, Squire Boone. There you see a, a gravestone to the memory of 
of their their black citizens. Hans Yoder of Great Swamp, the fellow that we're celebrating his 117th anniversary, uh, was the only one who came as a Mennonite to the United States. A lot of our Amish line uh, Yoders have ended up becoming Mennonite, but this line started off Mennonite and stayed that way throughout the decades. Arrived in 1817. They call it Great Swamp. Uh, was referred to the area in which he settled, which was really a meadow. It wasn't a swamp, but the German word for meadow sounded like it, so they used uh, swamp. The English people used swamp. When he arrived on August 17th, 300 years ago, Philadelphia was a city of only 5,000 people. Hans brought property in Bucks County, Pennsylvania in January 1720. Earlier American Mennonites had arrived in 1710, with many settling in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. One of these, Martin Kindig, was designated to return to Europe and encourage others to come to America. And there are estimates that by 1732, nearly one-fifth of all the Mennonites in the German Palatinate had done so. Hans the, Hans the Great Swamp died in 1753. Here you can see a, a map uh, shaded down at the bottom there of the Hans homestead. It consisted of 99 acres in Lower Milford Township, directly north of the present Quaker Town Airport. We can thank the late Ken Hoddle for figuring out the early generations of this line, that there were multiple uh, generations of men named Hans Yoder. And also Richard Jothers, uh, who researched and documented the line of one of Hans' grandsons who took on the spelling Y-O-T-H-E-R-S, Yothers is the way it's pronounced. Leonard G. Yoder researched and documented some of the Ohio branches of this family in the 40s and 50s. And today, uh, Carolyn Roberts uh, puts together and concentrates part of her studies on this family. Here's a picture of the early generations down through the grandchildren. You'll notice the use of the name Casper in both the second generation and the third generation. Families remain Mennonite down to the present day. Uh, Ken Yoder, who will be singing tonight with the Yellow Creek Men's Quartet, is a member of that family. Uh, the family gradually spread from Bucks to Lehigh County in Pennsylvania and then into Medina and Mahoning County in Ohio and on to Elkhart County and points west. This indenture uh, is recording the transfer of a piece of land from the great-grandson of Hans the Great Swamp to his son, uh, both of them named John, and the transfer took place in 1829. And this, this document is framed and out in the hallway uh, as a display item. After the reunion, it'll be going back to the House of Yoder for display there on loan. A couple of years ago, the Yoder Newsletter hired a professional to research and transcribe Steffensburg Yoder estate records that were held in Bern. And these let us correct the relationships between several families in the key immigrant generations as they had been interpreted by Carl Yoder and Dr. Don Yoder uh, based on their initial studies. One was for the family of Nicholas's son, Casper, who at death had children born both in the Palatinate and children remaining in Steffesburg. Casper's son, Hans, known to have been born in 1677, was referred to by 1724 as, quote, in some foreign country, moreover, it is not known if he is alive. Well, our Mennonite Hans had been born around 1680, three years difference from the actual uh, baptismal record, and he was in Pennsylvania before 1720. 
and he is the only known Yoder line in America to use the name Casper, both in his children and in his grandchildren's generation. And we believe that it's very likely that this Hans the Great Swamp is the son of Casper uh, and would therefore be a cousin of the Oli Valley Yoders, Hans and Yost. Adam being the parent of theirs and Casper being the parent of Hans of Great Swamp. We do show it with a question mark, however, because we don't uh, have anything more than those uh, combination of pieces of information. Among the notable descendants of Hans the Great Swamp was a Adam N. Yoder, a one-time Secretary of State of Montana, uh, Jacob Eschbach Yoder, who founded a school for former slaves in Lynchburg, Virginia, after the Civil War, and actress Tina Yothers of the TV show Family Ties. Conrad Yoder of North Carolina is the founder of our southern branch of our family. He arrived in Pennsylvania in 1746 and moved on to North Carolina in about 1753, buying land there in 1763. Here's what Conrad's family looks like. The first, the, there is a book that was written by uh, Fred Roy Yoder in 1970 called The History of the Yoder Family in North Carolina. And it traces the two sons who remained in North Carolina, and their names were John and David, uh, the first and the third child. But other children, uh, sons Elias and Daniel uh, and Jacob, the second, second son, all moved on to uh, Indiana by the early 1800s, 1810, 1820 time frame. And son Adam moved to the western part of North Carolina, Hayworth County, and it seems he's changed his name to Yuthers, Yuther without an S, like the Mennonite line had an S, but this is Y-O-T-H-E-R, and had descendants that are uh, recorded throughout the 1800s in northern Georgia, Some of the researchers, Colonel George Yoder, his grandson Fred Roy, Fred Roy Yoder wrote a book based on some of the documentation gathered by his grandfather, the late Her Hubert Yoder of Charlotte, Anna McCall McAllister who uh, researched uh, Conrad's people in Indiana and related families, and today Anitra, Anitra Nail who uh, is focusing on the family of Adam Yoder. Notable descendants included the Reverend Robert Anderson, who was the uh, founding president of Lenore Rhine University from 1891 to 1901, and Pulitzer Prize winning newsman Edward Edwin Yoder, who is still uh, writing today, and you'll see him quite often in the Washington Post and other venues. Historian Don Yoder, who I mentioned earlier, was able to find a report uh, through a German contact of a confirmation record from the Reformed Church Register of Musbach, Germany. Again, Musbach was where the Jacob Yoder went to get a release on uh, part of an inheritance by Hans. This confirmation record shows uh, Conrad being confirmed, which would have happened at age 15, and lists him as of Wiedenthal, Germany, which is a little bit to the north, and saying that he was the son of the deceased Nicholas Yoder. So it gives, that establishes his father's name as Nicholas. The next gentleman is Melchior Yoder. He was naturalized in Pennsylvania in 1765. It's known that his family corresponded uh, in 1774 with Conrad Yoder in North Carolina and sent several letters back and forth. By 1798, they were in Globe Mills, Snyder County. 
where uh, the children who were carpenters, and many of the sons were carpenters, were instrumental in the building of Seber's church. Melchior died sometime before December of 1820. One of the sons, who was a potter rather than a carpenter, moved to southwest Pennsylvania and took on the spelling Y-O-D-E-R-S. So anyone that you see today who ha uses that spelling is sure to be the descendant of this gentleman. Some of the researchers of Melchior Yoder, we first learned about him in the newsletter through an article done by Dorothy Yoder Kaufman in, in issue number three. Carl Yoders of the Southwest Pennsylvania branch that uses the S did a lot of studying there as well, focusing on his ancestor. And Donald and Grace Honeywell today uh, are the line coordinators for the Melchior Yoder line, and they've done extensive work in building a database of living and dead members and descendants of Melchior Yoder including face following down not just the male lines but the female lines. Notable people in the Melchior family. Well, there, there's one in particular that Don thought we should highlight, and the name is Jesse Wanda Williams, whose stage name is Chickie Williams. And she was known for performing on the Wheeling Jamboree radio program with her husband, Doc Williams, for more than 50 years. In 2008, the state of West Virginia named a section of roadway in Wheeling the Doc and Chickie Williams Highway, country music's royal couple. Thanks again to uh, Dr. Yoder, we have a baptismal record from Melchior in Wiedenthal, Germany. Uh, in 1763, son to a Nicholas Yoder, and of his brother John Jacob there in the same location in 1730. Additional information from the will of bachelor D D Daniel Yoder, uh, who died in Pennsylvania, made it possible for Dr. Yoder to have identified Melchior's father as having been a brother of Conrad and both having been sons of a Nicholas of the Nicholas Yoder, who was the brother of the Ole Valley Hans and Joost Yoders, and you can see that relationship on this chart. You can see Hans and Joost, their brother Nicholas, the son John, who released the property record in 1771. His brother Nicholas, who had sons John Jacob and Melchior, and Conrad, who was the uncle of Melchior. So that's why they were sending letters to North Carolina to check on their uncle. The Yotters of Epstein uh, took on the spelling Y-O-T-T-E-R. Uh, they represent a group that has several immigrations to the U.S., uh, basically in the 1800s, and uh, although Carl Yoder thought these folks were the son of the sons of uh, a Christian Yoder that was linked to the Yost on the Amish side of the family, our DNA testing shows that they do not connect to that line. So uh, we. At this point, still do not know uh, the exact linkage, but the DNA does establish that they match the Steffesburg line. So they are from Steffesburg uh, with all certainty. We just do not know the path to their connections. Now we'll look at the Yost side, and they consist of the Amish Yoders of 1742, and I know that many in the audience have four or five or six different connections back to Yoders. How many are connected to the Amish Yoders of 1742? Okay. And then there was a Yost Yoder who also came in the uh, 1700s. Uh, there are so many intermarriages that many of today's Amish link to both of them. 
a later fellow named Mikko Yoder, and we'll talk a bit about him later, who came in the 1820s and ended up in Holmes County. And then later on, uh, starting in the uh, uh, about a third of the way through the 1800s, uh, Alsatian and German immigrant Yoders came from other locations. This Protestant Reformation, we heard a lot about that yesterday, and the activities of the Swiss Brethren, the Anabaptist movement, uh, uh, kicking off, and the particular strength of the Anabaptists among the families of Steffesburg. Looking at the first Amish Yoders that came 275 years ago Thursday, that was Christian Yoder and uh, the family of the widow Barbara, whose husband has been speculated and sometimes stated, but uh, we still don't think we can say that was his name or this was his name. They arrived on the Francis and Elizabeth, which sailed out of Rotterdam. And the, their arrival date in Philadelphia was September 21st. Here you see the ship's registry for two Christian Yoders and one Jacob. And Jacob and Jacob and Christian were the oldest sons of the widow Barbara and therefore eligible to sign the registry. The other Yost Yoder had arrived by around 1761. This, these are pictures of the locations stop, or start and stop point and the midpoint of the trip that they took in 1742. Rotterdam, Holland was the origin point. They stopped in England at a town called Deal, and there's a castle at Deal that looks like that today pretty much, still the same building. And this is what Philadelphia looked like. 1742, remember in 1717, Philadelphia had 5,000 people. Well, by 1742, it had grown. It was now 10,000 people. It's about a third of the size of Goshen. Here's a map of, of where they settled, uh, where the Amish Yoders 1742 uh, settled. It's about 20 miles north of where the Ole Valley Yoders settled. Widow Barbara and her children were up closer to the area of Hamburg, Pennsylvania, and they were adjacent to their bishop, Jacob Hertzler. Her brother-in-law, Christian, settled uh, further south on the border of Upper Burn and Center Townships, about three miles southeast of the site of the Hostetler Indian Massacre. Here are a couple of scenes from the Amish Yoder community. Uh, one that says, uh, the homestead of Jacob Herschler, there's a, a Northkill Amish settlement, was our first congregation for the Amish in America, and there's a burial grounds there with a marker. There are no individual graves uh, visible with names. Also a picture of uh, a homestead that was on the property of uh, the odor known as YR23 in the Gingrich book. Uh, Schweitzer Christian sometimes called as that. He was the son of the immigrant. There are claims elsewhere. And yeah, the, the sign there says that uh, Jacob Herzler was the first Amish bishop in America. Well, else, elsewhere you'll hear claims that a Jacob Mast, who succeeded Herzler in 1783, was the first bishop that was actually ordained in America. But that may or may not be true. When Christian, Bishop Christian Yoder Sr., the son of Schweitzer Christian, died in Somerset County in 1838, his son wrote that the father had served in his bishop ministry between 50 and 55 years, making it as early as 1783 and no later than 1788 that he had been chosen bishop. So perhaps he beat uh, the 1786 date of Jacob Mast. Uh, Amish researchers, there are many of them, many individual families have published books. 
as the Amish tend to marry within a community. We have excellent historical data and, and many writings on families. Uh, Henry Hotstetler in his book of 1912, uh, The Descendants of Jacob Hotstetler, and a later one, Descendants of Barbara Hotstetler, certainly uh, were groundbreaking compilations. But most significant was the 1986 publication by Dr. Hugh Gingrich and our own Rachel Kreider uh, of the Amish and Amish Mennonite genealogies, which is an extensive outline of Amish families down through the 1850s. There are a number of stories about Yoders, and uh, one of the more interesting people of the initial generation of Amish Yoders was a fellow named Strong Jacob, nicknamed Strong Jacob. And he was the son of Widow Barbara. He was called Strong Jacob because of his great strength. And thanks to uh, the setting down by C.Z. Yoder of Wayne County, Ohio, we have a couple of stories. I'd like to give you one of them. Strong Jacob and two of his sons had hauled a load of wheat to a merchant mill. In those days, the grain had to be carried up several flights of stairs, and Jacob would set up the full three bushel sacks of grain at the rear of the wagon bed, and the boys were to carry them up to the third floor of the mill. At the head of the first flight of stairs, a stout young fellow reached out from a hiding place and peered pulled their beards as they were carrying their loads. They complained to their father, who said that he would carry the next sack. As he came to the head of the stairs, the hand came out again and pulled his beard. Strong Jacob quickly caught the mischief maker around the waist and carried him up the remaining stairs along with the three bushels of wheat. The more the young man kicked and struggled, the tighter Jacob held him. Arriving at the top, Jacob dropped him to the floor where he lay limp and docile. The sons carried the rest of the load without interference. Later on, Amish Yoder descendants were uh, many well-respected religious and community leaders, and some, some even became politicians, which which may be a negative thing, but uh, the first Yoder in Congress with a gentleman named Congressman S.S. Yoder. He served two terms beginning in 1887, after which he served as Sergeant at Arms of Congress of the House of Representatives for one term. Today, Kevin Yoder of Kansas uh, serves in, in Congress uh, Samford C. Yoder, whose grandson may be here. Is he in the audience? Did he let, his, his grandson is here today. He, Samford C. Yoder was a, a prominent uh, educator and president of Goshen College uh, for many years. Judge John Christian Yoder, who died recently and whose brother is with us today. Is the brother here? Over, over there? Uh, he was a successful West Virginia politician, and he had the distinction of running against uh, Jay Rockefeller's millions of dollars for political office. And uh, while Rockefeller was spending a couple dollars per vote, he got his votes for 16 cents. He didn't win, but he, he did get his support uh, much, easy, much uh, less expensively than Rockefeller did. Now let's look at the Steffensburg area and the, the documents and references to Yoders in the Steffensburg, Steffensburg uh, records. In 1597, uh, there's a record that the stepmother of Jacob Yoder of Amsoldigan uh, was a disobedient, stiff-necked Anabaptist, and he had to pay a fee fine for her of 200 pounds. Well, that town is very close. It's just on the outskirts of Steffensburg, so he's part of that family. In 1609, the Rooser family was labeled Anabaptist, and those Roosers later closely intermarried with the Yoders. In 1629, a gentleman named Conrad Eicher was executed in Steffensburg as an Anabaptist. And that same year, another person named Eicher was killed by drowning there for being an Anabaptist. 
In 1659, a Melchior Brenneman of Steffesburg, who was the husband of a rooster, was held in jail at Thun. Now here's the family of Joost Yoder again. Hans Yoder, the oldest son of Joost, married a rooster, the Anabaptist family, in 17, uh, 1671. In 1679, son Christian Yoder, then living two kilometers south in Thun, was fined 50 krona for letting an Anabaptist preacher named Ulrich Mueller preach on his property. In 1690, Joost Yoder asked, oh, excuse me, Joost Yoder, who was the father, he and other uh, church leaders of the Steffesburg Church asked to be relieved from their duties because of their Anabaptist children. Now, Joost had been well respected in the town. He was the chairman of the Steffesburg Parish Court which supervised morals and church and social and school attendance. And the parish record had written of him that he was an honorable, careful, wise, and modest man. But in 1690, again, uh, he, they asked to be relieved from their duties, but their offer uh, was not accepted. The same year, Casper, uh, son of Yost, was identified as having hosted a meeting in his home featuring a fellow named Jacob Amon. Later in 1690, son Yost Jr. and his daughter who married Christian Blank Christian Blank and Yost Jr.'s family were reported as having emigrated from Steffesburg. And as I mentioned, two of the daughters of Yost's brother, Nicholas, also married Anabaptists. This writing that you see there is from the journal of the area governor, uh, Carl Manuel, that... Uh, instituted a campaign against the Anabaptists, and it talks about uh, his causing Yost Yoder to be captured and held hostage at the town of Bern. Yost was then 85 years old, and along with the two other members of the church court, he was da taken down the river to Bern as hostages and they were lodged in the most expensive inn in town at their own expense with the idea that the pressure on their purses would cause them to give up the names of other Anabaptists in their congregation. They remained silent. Six months later, they were released. In 1695, the records show that Yost's son Christian and his son-in-law Hans Rupp emigrated from Steffesburg. Yost's son-in-law, Christian Blank, was among the ministers working with Jacob Amon and was present at the meeting that he had with fellow Anabaptist leaders in which the big blow-up occurred and Amon excommuted, excommunicated his opponents and that led to the formation gradually of the Amish. Blank, who later reconciled with the Mennonites, is also said to have been the first person to ever use the term Amish to describe the followers of Amon, and it appeared in a letter that he wrote in the early 1700s. At some point, the words in the Steffesburg church record, which described how honorable and wise the senior Yost was, were crossed out in pen and most, if not all, of his children had moved away by the end of 1695. Historian Robert Batcher, who was mentioned by Joe Springer yesterday, 
Karl Steffesberg and St. Marie au Mines, or Markirk in German, the town in Alsace, as the twin cradles of the Amish. In the 1690s, he says, over 40 families immigrated from Steffesburg to that area, including a number of Yoder children. Ulrich Mueller, who remember Christian Yoder paid a 200-pound uh, fine for uh, at Thun. He was already living there. Jacob Amon had a residence there. Uh, others included uh, among these 40 were the 40 from Steffersburg included the sons Christian, Yost Jr., Peter, and not far distant was their son Casper. Here you can see at the top the educated signature of Christian Yoder. And uh, Joe Springer said yesterday that we don't know if Jacob Amon could actually uh, write uh, the signature on the right-hand side beside Christian's is Jacob Amon's IA initials. Now, we've got a speculated dissent, and I, I say that because we have yet found anything that proves it, although the DNA has helped us quite a bit. The son Casper of Yost uh, was initially in Alsace and then moved into the German Palatinate. And among the uh, bits of information and documentation found by Karl Yoder and uh, Otmar Yoder uh, was identification of a number of generations of Yoders there, which lead down to two particular gentlemen who immigrated to the United States and whose DNA have been tested in the 1800s. The first was Mikkel Yoder, who came to Somerset County in 1825, and the second was Joseph Yoder, I-O-D-E-R, and there's only one family in the United States that spells the name that way, who came and settled in Bureau County, Illinois. In 1806, this Samuel Yoder, who was a bishop, wrote a letter to his dear cousin, his Liebe Veta, Christian Yoder, known as Schweitzer, YR23, living in Somerset County, then of, of great age. He talked about the status of the Yoder family in the Hesse, which is where they, they were. And it wasn't many years before his son, Mikkel, and his family came to Somerset County initially and then moved on later to um, Holmes County, Pennsylvania, uh, he, he referred to Christian as his cousin. We don't know the relationship exactly. But we do know that both Michael, Mikkel, and Joseph's descendants and the descendants of all the Yoders of 1742 and all, and the, all the descendants of Yost Yoder of about 1761 or by that date share the unique one-digit difference in their DNA that we know Casper's family links him back to Yost and we know that there's some other connection. One of these other sons has to be the son, the parent of YR1 and 2. Uh, Amish historian Leroy Beachy believes that it was the Jacob Yoder who married Verena Kaufman and he believes that because there's a Kaufman who settled in the North Co Congregation in Burke County that he feels is a cousin to that lady. But again, we do not know. If you go on the Internet, you'll see all kinds of claims. If you go to Ancestry.com, you'll see people saying it was Christian Yoder who married Barbara Gerber. You'll see people claiming it's Yost who married Barbara Rupp. Uh, we've got a question mark in the Yoder newsletter, and, and until we find something a little more substantial, that's, that's the way it, it stays for us. The Alsatian Yoders, this is an old chart of ours, and some of the French researchers had made some assumptions or guesses about uh, the connections at the top of the line here. Just ignore them. Based on Joe Springer's research, we can just throw those top ones out. But the bottom part is pretty much 
in line with his documentation, it does show some differences in who is connected to who, and I'd use his information, which was published in the last Yoder newsletter, April of this year. He outlined all the Yoder families and identified uh, their interconnections as he found them and as he's documented them in his new two-volume book on Mount Bayard. One of the more interesting fellows in this line was a man named Joseph Yoder. He was in, uh, in, made to join the army of Napoleon. Supposedly he was born in Switzerland. He migrated to France. We assume he didn't have a lot of choice, but he was in the army of Napoleon and participated in the march on Moscow. He brought his family initially to Stark County, Ohio in 1825, and descendants of relative, and relatives of his settled in St. Joe County, Indiana. And then there were a variety of, of uh, Germans from the uh, Palat Palatinate of Germany, uh, John, Wayne to, uh, John Yoder of Wayne County, Nikol Yoder, who I mentioned, Joseph Yoder, uh, as it's pronounced, I-O-D-E-R is pronounced Yoder, which I learned uh, just a few days ago, and, and uh, another Jacob Yoder who came to Illinois in 1866. And, and most of these, but don't not all, match to the Amish DNA. This is a, a map from a book by Stephen Nolt of Goshen College, uh, it, it appears in his work, The History of the Amish. And the hollow circles represent the settlements of Amish uh, whose ancestors came to America in predominantly in the 1700s. The solid circles represent Amish who came after 1800. And you can see that there are some that are mixed settlements with a dash in the middle but uh, pretty much identifies that the LaGrange and Elkhart area are predominantly descended from the early Amish of the 1700s. I call this my rose by any other name chart. It lists a little bit about each of the major lines, the Oli line, the Hansa Great Swamp, Amish Yoders, Conrad, Melchior, Alsatian, German, and others. Uh, and... Uh, I call it that because there are 15 or more different ways the name Yoder has come to be spelled from the original German J-O-D-E-R. Most prominent is Y-O-D-E-R, and then Y-O-D-E-R-S, Y-O-T-H-E-R, Y-O-T-H-E-R-S, Y-O-U-T-H-E-R, Y-O-T-T-E-R, J-O-T-T-E-R, J-O-D-E-R, I-O-D-E-R, Y-O-T-E-R, and, and even Y-E-T-T-E-R, although the majority of folks with that spelling are from a different family. Well, how many are there of us and where do we live? Uh, a sample from the early 1980s based on phone directory information uh, basically shows that some 57% of us lived in just three states, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. Uh, looking at Yoder population over the census years over here in the corner, uh, you see the numbers, the first uh, set of numbers year by year up to 1840 are representing counts of families of Yoders. In 1850, they started to include individuals in the census. So the counts from then through 1930 represent individual Yoders, uh, Yoder people. In 1990, they did a census count on surnames, and they found out that Yoder was the 1,118th most common surname with approximately 35,000 people with that name in the U.S. As of the year 2000, it was the 707th most common name with over 44,000 members in the U.S. 
and fairly recently released was the 2010 surname information. And we're the 598th most common surname in the United States with around 56,410 American Yoders. Now, does anyone see a pattern here? <laughs> now, let's see. Now, Carol and I have two children and two grandchildren. And someone out there has been working overtime, I think. <laughs> A, a recent sampling still shows that better than 50%, again, this is from phone directory information, better than 50% of the odors are in just the three states of Ohio, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. Uh, over the years, the newsletter has been in business. We've There have been a, a variety of... Uh, national reunions that we've been involved in. We've never sponsored one before, but we've helped advertise and do mailings on our own nickel and so forth. Uh, reunions held by the Yoders of North Carolina in 1995, in 2000, and two, uh, 2012, by the Ole Valley Yoders uh, in 1996, 2001, 2014, which again was the 300th anniversary of the homestead by the Yoder House in Grantsville, Maryland, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, in 2006. That picture is of Joe Yoder, uh, one of the past presidents of the Yoder's uh, Family Association of uh, Ole Valley, uh, Pennsylvania, and he was reading The Night Before Christmas in Dutch. I mentioned our webmaster, Don Kaufman, and his work. Uh, on our web pages, we have family tree data, census records, church and civil records from America and Switzerland, old newsletters, and much, much more. I'll remind you again that we're looking for a volunteer webmaster. In 2010, we joined the Facebook world, and today we have over 1,500 friends some of whom may be watching us live uh, through live streaming uh, right now. Uh, if you haven't like, if you're in Facebook or, or in that kind of thing, and you haven't liked the newsletter, I certainly welcome you doing so, because we post information and, and announcements there periodically. Thanks to our hard copy newsletter subscribers, we've had a kitty over the years to do some things, including mail outs for national reunions paying for some of the European research and paying for many of the DNA tests that I'll talk about in the next presentation. We're also able to make contributions to the building of the House of Yoder in Grantsville, and more, and more recently, a while back, gave another 500 for, to help refurbish its roof. The Yoder House, seen here, is a living history museum located in the Spruce Forest Artisan Village of Grantsville, Maryland. The house is modeled after the homes built in the mid-1700s by Yoder immigrants from Switzerland. Inside the Yoder house, you can see a presentation of Yoder history in Europe, follow, uh, view their collection of artifacts, and visit the genealogy lab on the second floor. It's open from May to October and staffed by volunteer Yoder docents who live there while serving. If any of you would like to be a docent at the Yoder House and take a, a period of next summer and, and stay there, uh, you get the free apartment and a place to stay, and, and, and you get to greet people and welcome them to the house. Uh, is James Yoder here from the Yoder House group? There he is standing in the back. Uh, he'll be at the table out in the main hall, uh, I'm sure answering questions for anybody. Uh, after the reunion, he'll be taking back that... Uh, that old indenture from the Hans Yoder uh, family to display. In summary, oh, in summary, where did I go in summary? Well, I'm missing. In summary, uh, I've showed the connections between the different Yoders. I've showed how all, how Hans and Joost Yoder uh, were the uncles of Conrad Yoder, who was the uncle of Melchior Yoder, and they're all out of that Nicholas side of the family. And pretty much what we know or think 
uh, on the Amish line, but there's still a lot of questions, and, and maybe in the next 35 years we'll learn some of them. I'd, I'd like to thank all of you uh, for being here at the reunion, and in the presentation I've told you a few stories from the past, but each of you has your own family stories to tell and to preserve. One of my dad Otho Yoder's favorite stories about his great uncle Levi Yoder of Middlebury. Levi operated the Shell Service Center and Tire Repair Shop at the corner of US 20 and Indiana 13, just south of Middlebury. Like uh, maybe many of us at Yoder's, Levi was known to be careful with the dollar. And one day, a younger family member had just had a baby and was handing out cigars in celebration. Well, when Levi was offered one, he replied, I don't smoke, but I'll take the nickel. <laughs> I encourage you all to rejoice in your own stories, the stories in your family, and pass them along. Better yet, write them down. How much richer our knowledge would be on all these family lines that I've talked about if we had just a few more such stories. In conclusion, thank you for your attention, and I especially want to thank Andreas and his father, Hans Jakob, for preparing the presentation and for coming here to join us after 320 years separated from our cousins in Switzerland. May God bless you all as he has blessed our family over the generations. Now, if we could take about a 10-minute stretch, I got a much shorter presentation to tell you about uh, the results of the Yoder DNA uh, project. It's now 4.34. If you could be back by quarter till, I'll quickly run through that DNA project uh, set of results, and then we'll be concluded. And till the banquet tonight, for those who are you, of you who are going, those who are not, safe travels on your way home.